Hello everyone. For this given oblique triangle, we are tasked to solve it. When you say solve, we are going to solve or determine the remaining measurements. In this, in this case, we are going to solve for the measurement of this angle and these two side measurements here. Now for any oblique triangle, we could either use the law of sines or the law of cosines, but these formulas will depend on the given measurements. Here, we are given with one side. And this side is between or included between two different angle measurements. This is an example of an A, sorry, ASA situation. And in this case, we are going to use here the law of sines. But first, let's try to label this. If this is our side A, this will be your angle A. If this is your angle B, this is your side B. And if this is your angle C, this is your side C. We need this because we can input all given measurements to this formula for the law of sines. So it's the ratio of the sine angle to its opposite side. It's equal to another ratio of sine angle, let's say sine B over B. And finally, equal to sine C over side C. So we are going to input all the values here and look for relationships, which we could apply in solving for the unknown measurements. So we're looking again for the measurement of angle A, C, side C rather, and side B. But that's one thing here, uh, one items of this three, which in which you may not use this formula yet. We are going to solve, or we can solve, the measurement of angle A using the triangle angle sum theorem. The triangle angle sum theorem tells us that the measurement or the sum or the measurements of the interior angles of any triangle, whether it's oblique or not, is equal to 180 degrees. In short, we can solve the measurement of angle A by subtracting the two known measurements from 180 degrees. So that's less 68 degrees, less 75 degrees. So let's subtract this using this equation, this uh, scientific calculator here. So we just simply have 180 less 68 less 75. And the result is exactly 37 degrees. It's exact because the two given angle measurements are also exact. So we are going to use here the measurement at angle A exactly equal to 37 degrees. Why do we need to solve for A first? The question will now pattern here because if you're not going to solve for the measurement of the angle, you might come up with a sine law formula without any ratio with complete details because angle A is given, yes, but if angle I'm sorry, side A rather is given, yes, but if angle A is not known, we cannot use this to pair for the rest. And we know that B and C, or sides B and C are also unknown. It will be complicated. That's why we started with this. If we get that, we can substitute all given and solved measurements. You have sine 37 degrees over 10, that's your side A. Take note, we have already a pair of given measurements. So sine B, based on the notations we had earlier. So that's 68 degrees over, we don't know the measurement of B. We have equal to sine C, which is 75 degrees over C. This is why we solved angle A earlier. For this to be given, we can pair it to this and to the last one in solving for the remaining unknown measurements. Let me increase this area here for more computations. So let's start with side B. In solving for side B, again, we could pair the first uh, ratio with complete details to the second involving the unknown variable B. We could use here the fundamental law of proportion or cross-multiplication 
And hence, we will get B sine 30, 7 degrees. We cross multiplied is equal to the other side as well, 10 sine 68 degrees. Okay, we are solving for B, so let's divide this side by sine 37 degrees for this to be cancelled out. We also do the same thing here on your right hand side. This would mean B can be solved by solving this entire expression. Using the same calculator earlier, we could solve it by first trying to make sure that we separate the um, numerator and the denominator properly so, the, so that we will not, not have any error in our computation. So let's use parentheses, parentheses, and sine 68. Close, close. That's for your numerator. Divided by sine 37 degrees. Equals, this is your result. 15.4064, so on and so forth. Let's round it off into two decimal places. So we will be approximating it, not no longer equal, because we are rounding off, approximating it to 15.41. So approximating to 15. Point forty-one, And since it's a side measurement, we will be using units. There's no given measurement, unit of measurement. If it's centimeter, we'll use centimeter. But since there is none, we will just be using units. So that's for your side B. Now for your side C, you might be tempted in using side B, 15.41 units and pair it with the last to solve for C, but take note that side B is already a round of value. So to avoid any complications in our answers in a hundred place of your um, values, let's try to pair the first with complete details to the last. Cross multiplication or the fundamental law of proportion will tell us the first is C times sine 37 degrees must be equal to, that's 10, times sine 75 by this by sine 37 degrees cancel that out you'll have here sine 37 degrees so c can be computed as this entire expression so calculator again parenthesis as well 10 sine 75 Close, divided by sine 37 degrees, which equals sine, you will get a result of 16.0502, so on and so forth, or approximately 16, it's approximately 16.05 we use here. This is uh, these are the three unknown measurements for this given angle, a uh, triangle rather. You have the measurement at angle A, 37 degrees, B is 15.41, and C is 16.05 units. One thing you could use here is the concept of um, the relationship between the angle measurement and its opposite side measurement. We have here the largest angle to be C. And it should be given that its opposite side, side C, should be the longest side. Your angle A is your shortest. That would mean your side A, its opposite side, should be the shortest uh, side. Let's check. Again, C is your long, largest rather angle. So C, 16.05 versus 15.41 versus 10. That's correct. C is your longest side. And then A. The opposite of angle A, which is the smallest angle, 10 versus 15.41 versus 16.05 is yes, it's our shortest side. This is how we solve ESA triangles.